Welcome to the video. In this video, I'd like to take a first look at these things here. These are the imaginatively titled Cyclops V2, and they have some improvements over the version one that's been available since summer last year. Now, if you want to go and look at the version one review, it's over here. We did it about June 2016, and these are those very goggles, and we're still using them on a regular basis at the moment. I really like these, and the fact that they are a piece of cake to use, the quality is pretty good, and the screen is nice as well, means that they're perfect for people who are getting into FPV. I know a few pilots who have gone and got these, and affectionately call them bender goggles, and they are doing a great job but there are a couple of potential limitations with this previous version. The main one, of course, is that you only have the scan button with which to select the channel and band that you want to view. Now, the channels and bands in FPV, some of them are very, very close together, so occasionally you can actually pick up the wrong one using the scan button, so a lot of people have been asking for some improvements, and that's where the V2s come in. Now the V2 themselves come in this lovely big box and you kind of open it up and all the pieces are in there as well as the goggles you get all the usual stuff that you'd expect there's a manual that takes you through all the settings and then you have a spare lens it's exactly the same lens as the one that's in the goggles already so three times the magnification and they have some extra pieces too you have this little piece of plastic this is actually for the top it's to mount the quantum head tracker on. I do hope that means the quantum head tracker is going to be available soon. It's been not been on the site for a while. Uh, the quantum head tracker is something that we have looked at again on the channel and we quite like it. It's a very cheap, inexpensive way to add head tracking to your goggles. There's a couple of bits of foam that come with that head tracker so that you can stick it on. We have an extra piece of nose foam. Um, the fit and the way these goggles work is identical to the version one. So the comfort and the way they fit on your face is exactly the same. Uh, but that little piece is for there in case you have a particularly flat nose. We don't, so we haven't used it. You have a whip antenna, uh, put that in the bin. I would recommend you get something like one of the Ionway antennas, or at the moment, uh, those that have been watching the channel for a while know that we're a big fan of these Menace Pagoda style. You have an AV cable. We'll talk about that in a minute because that's one of the new features available on these goggles. And then you have a couple of adapters for the battery both like a JST style and XT60. So you don't have to use one of these specific style batteries. I actually tend to have quite a few of these knocking around. These are the Fat Sharky style that work brilliantly with this. But if you have a little 2-cell or 3S LiPo, even if it has a JST or an XT60 connector, you can use these cables to change that. So let's just remind ourselves of the actual specs of these things. Uh, for those of you that are watching the video and haven't watched the version 1 video, this includes a 40 channel receiver, it has a 5 inch monitor, uh, 800 by 480 it has adjustable focus. I find these pretty good to use actually. Some of the other goggles that we've played with, you find the focus feels like you're straining your eyes. I don't have a problem with the Cyclops, which is one of the reasons why we recommend it. And a couple of my friends who have sight problems also find them quite easy to use too. Under here, where we would normally have the plate in the version 1, there's a receiver out and an AV in. That allows us to either get the audio and video out into a DVR and or use an AV in. You can change between AV in and the internal FPV receiver at the flick of a button. On the top then, you have the new buttons here. We still have our auto scan button, which is great for those pilots who don't want to understand or don't care about all the frequencies and other bits and pieces. They just want one button to press. That's there, which is cool. But we now have the ability to select the band and also the channels as well. These are displayed on the screen as you're going through, so you don't have to guess. I love that. I also really like the fact that it also shows you when you're actually locked on to a good signal and the signal strength too. But we'll look at that in one second. 
On the other side, then we have uh, the button that changes between the AV and the receiver. So that changes between whether or not you're going to watch what's coming in on the antenna or you're going to watch what's coming in through that AV port. Then we have the standard menu and plus and minus buttons, which gives you access to the screen. So let me quickly cut to what the screen looks like. The screen, the optical clarity, the way it works is exactly the same as the V1. Speaking to Hobby King, they've got a new anti-reflective coating on the inside to reduce screen reflection, and they've also got some new LCD drivers as well. Now the screen is nice and bright, and by pressing the menu button, it cycles you through the usual contrast, brightness, and all that kind of funky stuff, but it also allows you to select where you want the on-screen menu in the actual screen itself. By default, it's on the bottom row, but you can have it right up at the top. It shows you, by default, the battery voltage. So the battery voltage that you've got plugged in the back of the headset is displayed on the screen, which is a fantastic idea. Lets you spot when you are getting low and you're gonna to have to change the pack over so you don't run out of power in the middle of a nice long flight. Secondly, it also shows you the channel and band that you're on. That's only displayed when you're changing the channel and band bits and pieces. Once you've got that locked on, all that information disappears from the screen to keep it nice and clear, but it does show you a signal strength indicator on the screen, even when the channel and band has gone, which is a beautiful touch. The only other thing I'll mention if we go back to the bench is they have changed the way the battery connects here. Uh, the battery itself connects to the actual goggle in exactly the same way, the same barrel connect it's always used, but now it actually floats around. So it actually slides from side to side. The version one didn't do that. We've also got an extra little bit of branding here on the uh, on the strap itself which the version one didn't have and the last thing i'll comment on is the fact that we have this little blank here that currently doesn't have anything in it but that makes it look like a future version may have diversity so we've been playing with these for about a week so i need to say thank you to hobby king for getting these out to us in advance of them being on general release and they are exactly like the version ones they provide a very nice fpv experience and work really well the improvements are very welcome the ability to put your band and channel to exactly what you need if you know what your transmitter is set to means that you don't accidentally lock on to a band that's close enough. Having all that displayed on the screen is fabulous. It means you don't have to take the goggles off. You can just kind of do everything while you're peering inside. And the ability to have both connections to an external AV source and to also send the receiver FPV signal out the side for something like a DVR is a nice touch too. That's the only thing for me that is missing on these, and that is the DVR. I hope that Hobby King either come out with a modular thing or something that will snap on in here that will make that nice and easy to set up, because if it had a DVR, this would be a really killer set of entry-level goggles. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.